The first step in creating a sequence diagram is to create the context. Now the context may be the entire system, or it may be an individual use case, or it might be a scenario. And this is the most common approach is to use a use case scenario. So you can step through an actual individual implementation of the system. So here I have some use scenarios that would have been developed as we were building uh, the wireframes, right? We said the customer logs in, they view the movie list, they enter a search term. So here's what we see happening with the external customer as they interact with the system. But this is just the very beginning. Now we need to define not only what that user is doing, but what is the system doing as well? So if I start with this, then I need to go ahead and build in there, well, what happens? So when the customer logs in, um, the very first, right, so just opening the app is going to be that the interface displays login screen. And so we know what happens at the very beginning. And then the customer can log in, right, they're going to enter their username and password. Well, then what happens? Well then, uh, we have a couple of things here to help us do this. We have the use case diagrams that we've built and we're going to be working on renting a DVD so it's going to use this use case and it's also the uh, view the movie list which will be part of it as well. So uh, this part where they select a movie and view the movie list so we can look at the details there. The other diagram that we have is the analysis class diagram that identifies what kind of objects we can have. So we can have an object or multiple objects for each of these different classes. So if we think about then, what is it that we need to do next when that customer logs in, right? What do we, how, what happens in the system? So in the system, we know that the message, so the function to log in, it happens in the people class where it has this list, this container of persons. So in our documentation, then we can write that what happens is that people authenticates login, right? They're the ones that check their list of customers and say, yep, that's the right information for that. So they authenticate that. Well, once they authenticate it, what happens? Well, a couple of things happen. Uh, a transaction is added. So how do we add, so we're going to initiate a, a transaction and that happens in the customer class. So we're going to have an object for this customer when they log on. Let's say that this is Sally and when she logs on, then we're going to have, we're going to refer to this object, Sally, that has all this information. And so how do we do that? Well, then we simply say, now I'm not going to say customer because I want to distinguish it between the internal customer, the internal representation of the customer and the external. So I'm just going to simply put an A in front of it and that will help me un distinguish between the external customer and the internal object customer. So the A customer adds a transaction so we can get started to rent things if they choose to do that. And the interface displays the movie list. So when they log on, that's what comes up first. They display the movie list. So there we go. The, look at all the things we had to add between login and views the movie list. There's lots of things happening there in the system. And this is how we build this context as we go and add all of these details of what's happening. So the customer views this movie list that the interface just displayed and here they're going to enter a search term. And so what happens when they enter a search term? Well the interface is going to request the movie information the uh, movie list based on that search term. So this is going to be a different request because it's going to be based on that search term and the movie list is going to return the movies based on the search term. Oh, and here we see that we miss steps up here. Before the interface can display a movie list, they have to request, right? So they have to re request the movie list 
before they can display it because they don't know it so they re interface requests the movie list and the movie list returns the movies And let's go see if we're using the same terminology as we used in here. So we have a customer, we start a transaction, and who has the movie list right here? So it's actually movie inventory. So let's go ahead and keep our terminology the same. So movie inventory, and when we're inventory, re and this is a class, so I'm just going to keep it a single word. Movie inventory returns that movie list. And down here, that movie inventory would return the movie list based on the search term. In either case, it's returning it. And then the interface can display the, in the movie list, right? And down here, that's what's going to happen. After they return it based on the search term, then the interface is going to display that movie list, specifically the one that is based on the search term and so they have that happening. All right, then what happens? The customer views this movie list and they select a movie. All right, so that's what they're doing with the interface. Well, what happens when they select a movie? Then the interface is going to request the movie information, right? The details about that one particular movie, so the movie details. And who's going to return that? Who are they going to request that of? Who has the movie details? So right here, uh, movie info is the one that's going to return that. So we can say that movie info um, returns, right, movie details. And then as soon as they do that, then the interface can display. And this is how you build it. You say, okay, what's happening when a customer selects a movie? What's really happening? Well, the interface understands what the user just clicked on, and they go to that movie info and request the details. And the movie info returns those movie details, and the interface can then display those movie details. And then after it displays it, the customer can view the movie details, and then they have to decide. After they view it, they want to add a movie to the cart. So here, when the movie details are being displayed, there's a button that says, add this to my cart. And so the customer can click that. And then again, we get into these details of what needs to be added. And here we see this completed list. The customer selects, they add the movie to the cart. What happens? The interface sends the movie add request to the inventory record. The inventory record select movie item and informs the transaction. Status of the movie item is changed to rented in process. Transaction adds a line item. And then here we have the customer going to checkout. What happens when they go to checkout? The interface requests transaction information. The transaction computes the total, adds the tax, and the interface, and then sends that information, can return that information so the interface can display the transaction information. And then the customer can view that rental transaction. They can select pay now. What happens when they play? say pay now? Interface requests payment options. In, oh, and then we have to have somebody return it, right? So who can return it? Let's see. What are the who knows the payment options? This internal customer knows the payment methods. So we can go back and say that a customer, that's the internal one, right? A customer returns the payment methods. And the customer can select which one? Right? Once they select that, then a payment is authenticated. And how does this happen? So let's talk about this a little bit. Remember that in the use case that we say this is happening to the external payment system. And so this is an external actor, the payment system. And we can say um, the payment system authenticates. Well, we first have to say interface Right, they're the one that gets that. So interface requests um, authentication. And the payment system authenticates. 
right? And they return that authentication and then the customer, the internal one adds the payment and the payment is made. Um, the movie item is added to the to be shipped list and we right here at this point we go and say wait a minute so we know that the, we know that the staff is going to ship the movie and record that shipment but will they happen will that happen all at once or will there be um, as I was doing this scenario I'm thinking you know what that would be added to a list and then the staff would come along and they would go through this list of what needed to be shipped and so here I find something that actually could be improved on a previous diagram so we can go back and say oh I really need a to be shipped list uh, that that a, a staff member could go through and so here I see and this is the iterative process of analysis and design is that as we do the sequence diagram we find things that need to be added um, to previous documents. We need to say, oh, I need to have a list that that user can go through because that makes sense to do it that way rather than the rather than the person coming at each transaction and dealing with that before another thing can happen. So get it added to the list. And then the movie item is shipped and the status is updated to rented shipped. So you see the process of these details that need to be added and notice how long this got as we took this much shorter scenario that just referred to what the external customer was doing and identified all the things that need to happen within the system. And this is step number one to really define the context. What's happening and what are all those steps that are happening in that specific use case scenario. And we, then we would go through and, and we would fill out the rest of these and we say okay well what happens when the user abandons the transaction before completion and here where we see we see where the transaction is going to be deleted without any payment being made and, and it's going to be deleted from the system. Here we would fill in what happens if they rent multiple movies and again we would go in and fill in all of these details of things that need to be done. And we would end up with much longer uh, scenarios that include not only what the customer is doing but what the system is doing as well.